Hey everyone, hope you are doing well. In the last video, just to recap, what we did was we uh, configured the script in such a way that it will automatically, you know, log into the router and switches and back up your configuration, running configuration of the devices based on, you know, the time that you define. It can be monthly, it can be bi-weekly, it can be daily, it can be hourly basis as well. Right, so uh, you just run the script based on the schedule that you have defined. It will automatically automatically log into the router or switches and config and take the backup of your running configuration and push the configuration to the SFTP or you know uh, SCP device. So today, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to you know use um, uh, configuration that are very commonly uh, across all the routers and we are going to push them in in bulk in all the routers so why are we doing this so imagine uh, you have um, this five uh, network devices which can be your router or which can be switch right so the first and the foremost configure configuration that we have to do manually not via the automation is uh, configure the router interface and bring it to the network so as soon as the router is connected to the network and it is enabled with SSH or Telnet, then you can do rest of the configuration via the automation. But for the basic, at least you need to have the you know routers or switches accessible on the network in order to you know do the automation configuration. Now let's assume that these routers or switches are pretty much accessible on the network. Now what we have to do is like we have to push the commonly used configuration to these routers or the uh, switches. So when I say commonly configuration, for example, the NTP configuration access list that are common across all the devices and uh, probably the, you know, TechX configuration or uh, let's say the logging buffer or any other, uh, you know, SNMP related configuration that, that are common, right? So instead of, you know, doing this configuration manually on one by one on each router, we can leverage automation and push the configuration towards this router. What we cannot do using uh, this uh, is like uncommonly configuration that are being used. What does it mean? So for example, uh, let's say if you want to set up a interface um, IP address, right? So obviously all these routers will have different different interface IP address. So definitely, um, so we are not targeting um those i setting up those ip address using the automation in this video at least but probably in the upcoming video what we can do is we can you know define a parameter like for example uh router 1.1.1.1 will have so and so interface router 2.2.2.2 will have so and so interface and the, with so and so ip address uh which will take it look at, in future if uh, possible but at least in this video what we are doing is we are just going to push the common use configuration to these routers Right. So in my uh, demo, I have two routers, 172.160.200 and 172.160.201, and they are accessible over, um, you know, um, SSH, uh, or I would say like I'm using Paramico in order to access them. Right. So let me show you the script. So what we are doing here is we are basically importing the CSV model. So CSV model is to fetch the credentials information from the uh, CSV file. So if you look at the CSV file, so I'll, I'll quickly open up in Excel so it will be better um, visibility to you. So if you look here, uh, this is my, um, this is nothing but the same file here which I'm reading in an Excel. So I have defined uh, columns like host name, username, this is the password and this is the enable password. So this is the IP address of these two routers, credential, username, password and the enable password, right? So this is what I have set in the router credential um, in this CSV file. You can define as much as you want, like 5, 10, 15, whatever numbers you want to have uh, these uh, routers. You want to push the configuration to this router. You can define them uh, um, based on the each row, right? For example, IP address, username, password, and enable password, and save the file. So, uh, so let's say, so once you save the file, right, what we have to do is, so I go here and then what I do here is, so this is what I'm doing is like, I'm importing the CSV file and reading the credential. 
then I'm importing the Paramico module. And then I'm what I'm doing is I'm importing the XML elementary module to pass the XML file. So what exactly XML file looks like? So if you look at this particular XML file, in this XML file, what I'm doing here is I'm going to the um, you know uh, route. I put the router configuration in this particular format where I'm put, pushing some of the configuration in the um, uh, in the router. For example, first and the foremost, I'm going to the configuration mode, and then I'm defining. I'm sending this command by defining the NTP IP address, and then defining the clock time zone. Set the logging buffer as whatever the number is, one lakh or ten lakh, whatever it is, right? And then uh, setting up the access list, uh, setting up the SNMP configuration, setting the SSH timeout to 120, and no telnet server is what I'm defining. You can put uh, many other commands, whatever you wish to, as part of your common configuration, and save this file, right? So this is the template that we are going to use uh, in order to push the files. Now, after you do this, right, we are importing the time. So this is basically for the time related function. For example, if you want to run schedule or something else, so this is used. Now, what we are doing is uh, these are pretty much common. So we are, uh, you know, pulling up, um, I mean, basically, you know, creating a um, function here. So where we are trying to access the SSH, uh, the router by the XSH and adding the, you know, uh, policy like um, host keys, right? You have to accept when you SSH to the device, you have to accept the host kit for the first time, right? So we are adding that. And then uh, we are sending the username and uh, password to the router. And then basically here we are setting a shell session. And then here in this particular, we are uh, send, sending the enable command to the router and waiting for one second. And then in this particular section, what we are doing is we are sending um, the enable password to the router and sending enter. So once you do this, right, so these are the commands. So where you are basically going to, you know, send the configuration or whatever uh, configuration you found in the XML, right? And then after that, so this is what we are doing is we are creating a loop here. And in this loop, what we are doing is we are sending the command um, from uh, whatever command you see here. We are sending those command here and wait for one second before each command is executed. Right. Uh, this is going to run in a loop so that every commands are being sent here. And then finally, we end the uh, we come to the privilege mode and save the configuration and then close the SSH connection here. And then uh, it says like, OK, if let's say the um, configuration is successful, it says configuration applied successfully for so and so IP address. Otherwise, it is going to give an exception like there was error, you know, uh, applying the configuration for so and so IP address. Now, finally, we are calling up this main function where we are, you know, opening up this CSV file. This CSV file is nothing but your username and password and enable password. We are reading this uh, CSV file uh, row by row. And then uh, finally, after reading this file, what we are doing is we are basically reading the XML file here. And after reading the XML file, we are trying to get into the root here. And in the root, whatever uh, commands you see here, config commands, right? So these are config commands. So what we are doing here is we, we are basically, you know, uh, executing those, uh, extracting those uh, commands from the XML file and finally applying the configuration. So, so this is how exactly the script looks like. Now let's do one thing. Let's uh, log in. Uh, let's try to run the script and see if we are able to push the configuration properly or not. Right. So let's say um, I go here and run Python router py. And let's see what it does. Okay, so it says configuration applied successfully for this particular router 200. And now we'll see if it is able to apply for 201 or not. It is also able to apply the same configuration for 201. Let's verify. So let me log in now. 200 Cisco is the username, Cisco is the password, enable and Cisco is the password again. Let's see the configuration. So we'll go here and see how exactly it looks like. Show run NTP. Yes, so I see definitely NTP server there. Let's see the second command. Clock. Oops. 
clock. I see the clock as well. Let's see logging buffer. Logging buffer is also configured. Let's see. Access list is also configured. Okay. So I, uh, I definitely see there is a total number of uh, three accesses that might be because I use it for some other testing purpose. So definitely access list is also configured. And then SNMP, I see SNMP is also there. Uh, then timeout. Uh, timeout might not show to us. Let's see terminate. It, it will not, also not show because this configuration is something like that you, you configure, but it might not show in the show, show running configuration. So this is how exactly it looks like, right? Um, we were able to verify most of the configuration are already there in this first order. Let's verify it on the second order as well. Cisco is our username, Cisco is our password, Cisco at one, two, three. Now let's validate the same thing here to run. NTP, we definitely see NTP there. Logging also we see. Access list is also we see here. And then SNMP, we do see. Yep, so I see most of the configuration is already applied. Now let's say if you want to create um, a, um, another command, let's say look back for example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let's say Ideally, it is not recommended, but what I'm doing is I'm setting the same loopback interface in both the routers, though it is not required. Uh, interface loopback zero, and then IP address one Now, if you notice, loopback is not configured here. Both the router will have the loopback IP address 1.1.1.0, which is generally not required and it is not recommended. I'm just showing you for the sake of configuration being pushed or properly or not. Okay, let's push this again. Okay, it is pushed on the first router. So if you see here, the first router loop back is already configured. Now let's see if it is pushed in the second router or not. Okay, it is also applied in the second router. So if you see here, the loop back is configured. So this is uh, what exactly I meant, like uh, pushing the common configuration to the routers um, in um, bulk. So why are we doing this? So this will reduce the human error or manual error that we may sometime, you know, when you are configuring most of the parameters manually, we tend to miss some of the configuration and which will end up in troubleshooting uh, uh, and we might take some time to figure out what is the actual root cause of this issue if some of the configuration are not applied properly. So it is recommended, right? A common configuration should be, um, you know, uh, we can use such common configuration in an XML format and send those common configuration to those routers remotely without, you know, human interruption. So let's say if anyone has to do it manually, it might take some time, but when you're doing this um, by the automation, so, you will uh, reduce human errors and it'll uh, reduce the human uh, time as well uh, in order to push the configuration. And uh, if you're worried about like, let's say, um, there can be some issues when you're configuring the sending these commands, we, you might encounter some issues, right? Obviously you can uh, capture those commands by doing furthermore scripting um, aligned to your requirement. So when I say line to a requirement means, let's say if there is any exception, so you can, you know, uh, log those exceptions and, you know, uh, it'll give you an, um, you know, message that uh, so and so router was not able to properly uh, configure or due to so and so reason, right? And you can log those messages and you can manually look into those routers in the future whenever it is required. But um, just to give, in, uh, give you an idea, like this is how exactly you can automate things in your network by pushing the configuration remotely and standardizing the configuration to the required ones, right? I hope this video is informative for you. Thank you for watching.